All right, before we dive deep, 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 let's dive a little bit deep and get started talking about this meat. I got a flank steak just really quickly so we can go over this. You see how the grains are running left to right on the screen? I am gonna take my knife and go right down the middle, okay? I want it in two pieces. That way when we slice our steak later, after grilling, we're gonna cut against the grain. Make sense? You on board so far? Mm-hmm. All right. Got a Ziploc bag. We're looking at a good marination for about two hours. You probably go up to eight hours, but with the lime juice, I'd be really uh, skeptical. All right, I just wiped off my hands. The steak's right here. Uh, speaking about the two hours, what'd you say? The acid from the lime starts to cook the meat. Yes, when, oh. You're teaching me stuff, honey. God almighty. All right. Oh, let's go to the ingredients real quick. All right, here we go. Uh, Worcestershire sauce. I got some little soy sauce. I'm gonna do some orange jelly because I feel like the sweetness can come out. I know what you're thinking, just relax. Some garlic, some oils, pepper. On the dry seasonings, little adobo. You guys have been screaming for me to get that. We're gonna try it out today. Paprika, hot chili powder. I mean, hot uh, red pepper, cumin, and some chili powder. A lime which we're going to zest, okay? I have bucked the system ever since I've been a senior in high school when I went to my first internship to learn how to cook. It was a, a members-only club called Club Lecant. It's actually where we had our... Wedding uh, reception. Thank you. Just make sure you remember who you're married <laughs> to. Um, they taught me a different way, and ever since then, I've always bucked the systems. Typically, you take your microplane and you would scrape your microplane, typically you'll take your fruit, sorry, and you'd go like this, and you'd just rotate it because all this stuff falls down. I like to do it the other way. You've got ribs here because you can see what you're doing. So we're just gonna go through the whole thing. See how I can actually see. Making sure you don't get too much weight. Right, plus, you can actually see the, instead of looking every time to see where you haven't pitted it or haven't uh, taken the skins off. See that? Now you don't get too much of the pit, but you can actually, once you start getting used to it, you can feel the difference between skin and pit. The pit will grab your microplane way more than what the actual line will. And you're kind of getting more bang for your buck because you're using the lime juice and the lime zest. That's right. As expensive as crap is getting, you better learn how to do stuff to maximize the flavor. Jiminy Christmas. Typically take a fork, it don't matter, nobody's gonna know. Just take a spoon and get as much lime juice out as possible. Be aggressive, be, be aggressive as my daughter's cheerleading in the background. <laughs> Good way to take out your dang frustrations, anger, and tensions. A lot of times, maybe if some orange juice goes into a good marinade. I'm going to put uh, the jelly in. It's got the skins in there. I actually get the sugar-free. It's 80% fewer calories. I eat it all the time, but we actually eat a lot with salmon. Um, as a good orange marmalade with some Cajun seasoning, but this will go just fine with it. See that right there? That's what we want. All right. About a tablespoon of garlic. See how much we got. Probably non-traditional, but I am pretty much non-traditional myself. Maybe about three to four of those. So that's three, four exact measurements are oh, nowhere because, to be found. Because the other bottle is empty. So you're using the rest of it. Yep. <laughs> that confused me. I was like, that's the same thing you just used. That's right. All right. And about equal parts of this. And that's low sodium soy sauce. It is. I know what you're thinking. Soy sauce and steak. How in the world do you do it? I'm telling you, it just brings out the flavor. Don't ask me. I'm not the guy that came up with the idea. We just really, really like it. The secret, I think, is the jelly because it just offsets the tartness from the soy sauce and from the uh, Worcestershire sauce. 
It's supposed to use um, olive oil. We have to get more of that. So I'm gonna cut it with a little bit of avocado oil. Not a not a big deal. Jaw seasonings, fresh pep, quite a bit. Paprika, just a sprinkle. Remember the trick I told you guys last time we're doing this with a paper plate? This is no different. Imagine the surface of this bowl being the width of that flank steak that we just used. Does that make sense, honey? Mm -hmm. Okay, so tell them when I mess up. And what you're trying to do is season the steak. So that's how I gauge how much seasoning is to use. I don't want to use this too much because this is pretty spicy. We have some spicy things coming later. So just a dusting. Imagine that being one side. And that was chipotle chili pepper. Yep. This I'm going to imagine being two sides. So I'm going to go forward and backwards. That's how I do it right there. So that's a good gauge when you guys are coming up with just basically marinades by yourself or seasonings back and forth as well. Imagine one side and then you flip your steak over to the other side. And a little adobo. I know it's full of salt. So same thing. All right. Let's see here. Hell yeah. All right. Let me taste. Let me taste your finger. <laughs> Damn, woman, on camera? How am I supposed to mm. function now? Oh, yeah, that's, that's good, baby. Yep. All right. Let's see if I can do this. I'm just going to dump all the marinade in. I still stand behind. If you don't have jelly, you can always squeeze a um, more citrus. You could do a lime. I mean, an orange. You could do lemon if you wanted to. If you don't have jelly, uh, brown sugar would work great. Maybe, I would say maybe just a tablespoon. You don't want the sweetness to come out in this, but it definitely offsets the balance. Okay. Leave a little air in there and just toss it around. Get it marinated really well. Like I said, we're looking about two hours. Take the air out. After you got it all mixed up really good. There we go. Two hours from now, we're coming back. I always say, how do you raise the flavor? How do you raise the bar? Simple, same ingredients, just adding something to it. And this is no different. I don't have my grill going today, but we're gonna get, try to get a char. I love pico, fresh, simple, um, just, oh, I just love everything about it. But we're gonna flash it on the flat top. I don't wanna overcook the tomatoes, I just wanna char. So we're gonna do the same thing with onions. I've seeded my jalapeno because I do not like it too hot. So we're gonna do like a charred style pico to go on our steak tacos. You know my flat top's hot because it's smoking. That's a good way to know it's hot. All right, you ready? Yep. No salt, no pepper. I would not encourage new flat top users to do this recipe. This is not the time when you're trying to season your flat top to putting tomatoes on your flat top. The acidity is too much for it. All right, that's going. Now while that's going, back to my fancy dancy chorizo. Today we're not keeping it at chunks. Today we're gonna be chop, 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 chopping it up. Now this is where I'm just gonna lightly oil the skins. That's gonna come through. Same thing on this side of the onion. Oh yeah, see that? Ooh. So the point of charring your vegetables is you're just adding like another depth of flavor, It's right? like the idea of like fire roasted, plus it changes the texture a hair. I'm not gonna blend this. I'm still gonna keep it uh, pico style. I just think it just adds another dimension of flavor that's underutilized. All right, get my little blistered spots. You guys know I like my trezo blackened. I don't know how to say it. I just like it. All right, this is going on right here. 
Now let me show you the secret. This is probably the most gringo thing you've ever seen, but where we're from, Mexican food always has <laughs> cheese dip. I didn't say this was authentic. So I don't want to hear, oh, God almighty. We're using cheese dip. You buy it at the store. Hey, be careful. Don't burn my jacket. Okay. We're just going to keep warming this up. It'll happen pretty quick. I'm going to keep moving it on and off the heat. Two days ago, I was out here filming in a t-shirt, and today it's sleeting, so go figure. It's cold. All right. Just take that off, save that for later. See? See how much more color you're getting? All that is is flavor. It's the natural sugars in your vegetables caramelizing. So I'm gonna let that cool down because if you start cutting it down or cutting it now, you're gonna really be hurting. We're gonna get cleaned up. We're gonna start this process all over again. I'm gonna get my flat top ripping hot. Then we're gonna start searing our steaks. All right, now that I cleaned it, I'm just putting a thin coat of avocado oil back on the flat top. And then we're gonna shoot a temperature really quick for you guys. I know you guys like temperatures. I know it's hot, I can tell you that, because we're smoking. Woo! This says 550. <laughs> 530. Perfect. And what, are you on low? Right now, no. Right now I'm on medium low. Medium Because it's so cold outside. All right. Marinade and all. I want as much marinade as possible. If you do it right, you're not going to steam the meat. You're going to caramelize the meat. You ready? So the process now, we're just going to fast forward it pretty quick. You're going to cook the steak the way you like it. Personally, we like ours medium rare. Okay. It's a process of just flipping back and forth. Um, you want to hang on a really good amount of time before you flip it the first time because right now your steaks are building the crust. And I've always said crust is king. That's where you develop that so much flavor. That's that char. If you guys look up there, we did this steak fajitas and it's no different. Okay. That crust just brings something out that a lot of things don't. So flip these back and forth. Once you get that good crust, it's just a combination of going back and forth. The temperature we're going for today is about 120. We're going to let it rest. And then from there, we're going to start chopping our vegetables to get ready for that good pico. All right, I'm going to do one of each to show you guys really quick. I'm just rough dicing it. There's no reason to really to pay attention to what I'm doing, but I'm just gonna show you real quick. Good sharp knife. Remember your skin on your tomato is gonna be super uh, soft right now. So a good sharp knife. Now that you got all your vegetables cut up, about a tablespoon of garlic, I don't know, a little bit more. We like the garlic. I cut a big old handful of cilantro. Personally, I love cilantro, so we always go heavy on that. And then those dang limes that I squeezed earlier were so tough, I cut them smaller, because the smaller you cut them, the better off you can squeeze them. All right, now there are limes in there. A good dash of salt. Remember, we didn't season our vegetables at all. A good fresh black pepper. See that steam right there coming up from the vegetables? It's going to soften the tomatoes a little bit more. It's going to release some of those oils in the cilantro. Mm. Let me have a bite. <laughs> 
Mm. Mm. I can eat it like this. I know, you could just eat that. <laughs> mm. Mm. Like I said, look, when you flip it, I've already cleaned this side. I tell you guys all the time to clean your flat top. So just take it, get all those sugars and stuff off. That way it's just not burning on your flat top. Just like that. All right, I just threw my uh, tortillas on the flat top to get them nice, warm, and pliable with the leftover heat. The steaks have been resting for a minute. The grains are running this way. I'll just shave mine a little bit thin. That looks too good. Let's see if we can make one of these bad boys real quick. A little bit of steak. Crunchy chorizo. Some like good cheese sauce. What do you think? God, that looks good. What do you think? Woo, you can hear that sleep now. It's pounding that metal roof. Hey, there you go, guys. A great way to introduce a new cut of meat, a new way to make salsa, cheat code on that cheese sauce. You know, I'm about to go inside and enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to press that subscribe button, pound the notification button, try something different. Peace.